this video is going to be all about different types of mutations and the consequence that a mutation can have on the cell. Now, mutations occur at the DNA level, okay? So it happens normally when DNA polymerase is building those new strands of nucleotides during DNA replication. Now, DNA polymerase doesn't make mistakes often. It's like one in every, I think it's 100,000 bases, something like that. And DNA polymerase will make a mistake. But DNA polymerases have what's called proofreading ability. Basically, it checks itself as it goes along. So as DNA polymerase 3 is laying down nucleotides, it checks to make sure it laid down the right one. So it might say, okay, on that strand, there's an adenine. So I better lay down a thymine, right? Because adenine and thymine go together. So it'll lay down that thymine, check that it did the right thing, and then move on to the next one. But about every one in one billion bases, DNA polymerase will make a mistake and not catch it. That's how mutations can happen. And so even though mutations happen at the DNA level, because DNA affects the RNA that's made, right? Any mistake in the DNA is also going to be made in the RNA. Any mistake in the RNA may or may not affect the protein that's made during translation. So let's go ahead and talk about what these four types of mutations are. We're going to have a silent mutation, missense, nonsense, and frame shift. A silent mutation means that the mistake or mutation at the DNA level, even though it changes the RNA and it technically changes the codon, you still get the same correct amino acid incorporated. Because what you may have noticed when looking at the codon wheel is there's something called redundancy. There are certain codons that give you the same amino acid. That's what it means to be redundant. Multiple codons give the same amino acid. Okay, and we're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. But I do recommend if you don't have the codon wheel handy that you go ahead and grab it because I'm not going to have it on these slides or a codon chart if that's what you prefer. But remember, on the exams, for me, you will have the codon wheel. All right, now, if the mutation in the DNA affects the RNA, which it always will, and that change affects which amino acid gets incorporated, then we have a mistake. And so we call that a missense mutation. Now, missense mutations, the impact that's going to have on the cell kind of depends. Remember, I mentioned there are about 20 different amino acids. Some have a positive charge, some have a negative charge, some don't have any charge. Some are hydrophilic, some are hydrophobic. So these different amino acids have different properties. So let's say the original amino acid that should have been incorporated had a positive charge. Well, let's say the mutation led to a different positively charged amino acid being incorporated. The cell may be okay because this incorrect amino acid may behave the same way the original one would have because they have similar properties. So it might be okay. But what if the new incorrect amino acid has a negative charge? Well, it's certainly not going to behave the same way the original positively charged one would have. So that protein is likely going to fold a little bit differently. And remember, the overall shape or structure of the protein is going to affect its job. So if that protein shape is altered too much, it may not work. And that could be detrimental to the cell. All right, the third type of mutation is a nonsense mutation. And this is when the mutation at the DNA trickles down to the RNA and instead of an amino acid getting coded for by that codon, instead, a stop codon is reached. That means translation stops prematurely. That means the entire protein is not made. This is normally lethal to the cell. 
okay? Because without a protein at all, you know, that's one key job that's not happening anymore. And a lot of times, every protein is really, really important for the cell's survival. So not having one can lead to cell death. So I remember it as nonsense mutations are not tolerated. And then the last one is called a frame shift mutation. And this is when DNA polymerase gets a little confused and it either adds an extra nucleotide or it forgets to add one. So now the number of nucleotides is off. There's either one too many or one too few. That's a problem because now the reading frame or the sets of three that we're reading are now different, right? Because now there's one too many or one too few nucleotides. So that's gonna completely throw off how we group our nucleotides. So we may make a completely different protein, one that shouldn't even exist, right? So that's normally really dangerous for the cell. And a lot of times what ends up happening is there will be a stop codon early on. So rather than making some crazy random functional protein, normally it just stops really early, so it's just pointless. But again, that means that original protein isn't made, okay? And that is normally lethal for the cell. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Let's try to visualize this. All right, so we're gonna be looking at DNA used to make RNA, that's transcription and then RNA to amino acids, I've just abbreviated it here. And again, that process is translation. So let's say the DNA should have been ATG. All right, so what RNA should be made? Well, it's gonna be complementary. So UAC, remember base pairing, but now we're dealing with RNA, so no thymines. And then if you look at your codon wheel, UAC, is going to give you the amino acid tyrosine. So the code you need to know, TYR. Now, let's look at a mutation. So let's say DNA polymerase should have made or laid down the nucleotides A, T, and G. But let's say it got confused, it made a mistake, and instead of laying down A, T, G, it laid down A, T, A. Okay, this is a point mutation. It's only happening at one point in the DNA, but it's gonna have that trickle down effect, right? Because this DNA, now ATA, is gonna be used to make RNA. So what's the incorrect, like what's the RNA sequence going to be if this mutation happens? U, A, U, right? Because this incorrect nucleotide is now going to base pair with U instead. Well, it turns out, if you look at your codon wheel, UAU still codes for the amino acid tyrosine, okay? So in this case, it's no harm, no foul. So which type of mutation would this be? Silent, right? Because the same amino acid will get incorporated. The cell will be fine. It doesn't even really know there's a problem, okay? So this would be a silent mutation. So whenever I ask you about mutations, of course you wanna know the, the definition, but I could give you the DNA or the RNA and say, hey, if there's a mutation, you know, what kind of mutation is it? What's gonna to happen to the cell? So you always need to go through and figure out, okay, well, if the DNA should have been this, my RNA should be this, and I should have gotten you know, this amino acid. And then you go through and look at, all right, the mutation happened here in the DNA, so it's gonna make this change to the RNA and then look to see if it changes the amino acid. All right, so we're gonna do this now on the next slide, which is apply what you know. So you're gonna see a few different mutations and you're gonna tell me which kind of mutation it is. So as always, I recommend you pause and work this out on your own. So the DNA should have been GAC, okay? And so let's go ahead and just work out what the RNA and amino acid should be. So CUG would be the RNA, the amino acid would be leucine. All right, so now here we go. If your mutation causes the DNA to be CAC, what kind of mutation is this? 
So think about how is this new DNA sequence going to impact the RNA? Well, it's now going to be GUG, and that gives us the amino acid, use the codon wheel, valine. So these are not the same, right? This is a different amino acid. So that's a mistake. So this is a missense mutation. Let's look at another one. Here's the template DNA, A, C, G. That's what it should have been. So now, how is that gonna, what should our RNA and amino acid be? There we go. Now let's look at where the mutation is. It is gonna be in our third nucleotide. So that's gonna make our RNA sequence actually be U, G, A. Check the codon wheel. What does U, G, A give us? Uh-oh, it's a stop codon. Remember, there's no amino acid called stop. So this means translation is ending too soon. This is normally not tolerated, so we call this a nonsense mutation. Because instead of adding the amino acid cysteine, we get a stop codon. So that's a nonsense mutation. All right, our next one. Template DNA is, should be T, 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 which means the RNA should be A, A, A. Look at your codon wheel. That gives us the amino acid lysine. All right, if there's a mutation in that third nucleotide, so it's now a C instead, that means the RNA codon is going to be A, A, G. Look at the codon wheel, and we still get lysine. That is good. So again, no harm, no foul. This is going to be a silent mutation. So now let's go ahead and check out the last type. So if here is the template DNA, I already went ahead and filled out the RNA sequence that should be made as well. Now, I'm not going to go through with the amino acids. I'm just kind of running out of space here. Um, I just want to show you what a frame shift looks like. So remember, a frame shift is when DNA polymerase gets confused and either adds an extra nucleotide or forgets one. So in this case, um, DNA polymerase is going to add an extra nucleotide. So notice I went ahead and underlined what the original codons should be, okay? And again, these are just examples. Normally, if I'm asking you to do this, it'll start with A, U, G, but here I was just making up a sequence, okay? So you can pretend there's more in front of it and more after. So if DNA polymerase adds an extra adenine here, that means in the RNA, there's gonna be an extra uracil here. So this is gonna throw off the codons, right? Because now, this first one that you see, the codon is going to become C-U-U, -U, right? Let me get my mouse on the right screen. Oh, sorry. There it is. Okay. So notice it should have been C-U-G, right? But this extra uracil means the new first codon is C-U-U. -U. That means the second codon is going to be G-U-G, -G, third one C-A-A, -A, and then it would continue on that way, okay? Excuse me. So this is called a frame shift because the reading frame, how we read the sets of three, has now been shifted. Okay. So now we're going to get a totally different set of amino acids and it's going to be pure chaos, y'all. All right. That is the end of our conversation on mutations. Let me know if you have any questions.